Yo, 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 what's going on? This is Kurt and I'm back for another video. The topic of my video today is the gay day escort, the divine masculine immortals of Haitian voodoo. So basically I finished my last video. It was actually an introduction to this topic because to understand immortality, I thought it was uh, important to preface the subject to be able to get into the gay day. So now, what are the gay day? To understand the gay day, you have to understand the administration of Baron Samzi. Baron is a title, a position, and a set of responsibilities. Baron is the divinity of death and everything surrounding it. It's an administration. It's, it's, like, it's like a government. Baron is like a government. Baron and Grande Brigitte. Gede is an attainment. Gede is an immortal having transcended death while living, yet working through the current of death and in close proximity to the Baron Samedi administration. Gede is an immortal, not a death entity. Gede is an immortal, not a death entity. So if you, let's say somebody goes to the cemetery in Haiti and they say, oh, I have a Gede, it's not true. Gede is an immortal. Gede can work through the current of death, but Gede is not dead. The point of a Gede is, is to reach is to die before you die. So when you die before you die, when you die to your lower personality, which is your breath, when you die before you die and you find a higher source of energy to sustain you permanently and eternally, you become a gay day. That's why I'm wearing my glasses gay day style because the gay day see everything in the opposite way that humans see everything. So that... Gede see life the way it's supposed to be seen. They have no limitations of time and space. Therefore, Gede do not dwell in anger. They don't dwell in jealousy. They don't dwell in any low-level emotions. In Haitian voodoo, we say, Gede di betis, mais Gede pas fait betis. Meaning, Gede will say some bad words. Gede will uh, hurl some insults. But Gede doesn't do anything that's wrong. Energetically, they are perfect. The motto of the Gede is perfection or nothing. Perfection or nothing. As a Gede, you take, you come into this life to be perfected, to reach the status of perfection. And ironically, one of the best representations of a Gede as far as, or not the best, but one of... The most popular ones was Mike Ross in the in the show called Suits. So the entire law firm was the kingdom of the Baron. Harvey represented a Baron, and Donna represented Grand Brigitte. So uh, Mike Ross in the show he goes to jail, but what that really means is that for this immortal entity. To come into the fold of mortality, he had to pass by the kingdom of the dead. So, in the show, symbolically, before Mike Ross goes to jail, he was really just a spirit. And his girlfriend, Rachel, called him through the mirror. She called this Gede through the mirror, and this Gede came through. So, when he went to jail, that's when he actually incarnated on the limited plane. So, what does the Gede really represent? The Gede represents an immortal. But to reach immortality, like I've mentioned in the other video, you must connect your aura to a source that will make it pulsate eternally. What does that mean? If I, if, if I, have, to, if I have to be, if I'm honest and brief and clear with you, with theories, you're wasting your time. With books, you're wasting your time. Because ultimately, there's only one thing that matters. Knowledge is useless, for it is forever 
opposed to ignorance. True wisdom leads to action, not debates or endless wars and exchanges. The highest form of action is self-love, then self-respect, and finally self-esteem. Self-esteem is when the interior when the interior reflects the exterior with no discrepancies. One of the features of the Gede is that they cannot lie. They cannot tell any lies because they have nothing to fear. They have nothing to fear. Nothing angers them. So if you call a Gede, if, there, if a Gede manifests in a ceremony, you will get the most accurate reading possible because the Gede is not going to hide any single thing. So now, this is a concept that I just made up. It's called the temple of words, right? So you have A all the way to Z, 0 all the way to 9. This is the temple that most occultists build based on theories, based on books, based on debates. But ultimately, the ultimate source of energy is high frequency and high self-esteem and high self-respect and high self-love emotions because you can tell me anything about yourself but if i come to your house and you're not living the way you're supposed to be living you're a fraud similarly if you do not have high level frequency emotions in your aura in your auric field you're wasting your time but guess what happens? Most humans are so scared to have high frequency, to have joy, to have happiness, to have confidence. Why? Because they've made those two eyes. That's why the Gede wears his glasses upside down. They've made those two eyes the all and be all when it comes to their self-esteem. But the number, one, the number one rule of Gede is very simple. Do not have the external mirror be the gauge for your internal world. Your self-esteem must not be associated with anything that you accomplish in the external realm. What, what, what does that mean clearly? It means that if you do not have the car that you want, you don't have the career that you want, you don't have the girl that you want. It doesn't matter. You are supposed to have, you are supposed to contain emotions that transcends it all. Because what is more magical? A guy with a private jet who feels the high emotions associated with a private jet or a person who takes public transport but who feels as good as the one with a private jet. The magic really happens in your internal realm. That's how you determine who is really advanced. You're not supposed to depend on your ex ex external circumstances to gauge yourself. That's how you become a prisoner of cause and effect. And cause and effect is nothing but the anchor or cause and effect is nothing but the child of anger. Anger is the first type of cause and effect. What does that mean? It means that in the realm of the Gede, they don't believe in history. The Gede do not believe in history. Why don't they believe in history? Because you weren't there. You can't prove it. I can't prove what happened in the Haitian Revolution. I wasn't there. I might want to think something happened, but I wasn't there. The only thing you control is how you manipulate the air, the water, the fire, and the earth element. How you control your internal realm. So if you're waiting on external things to validate you, you cannot ascend beyond the perception of being a human. You're supposed to absorb every single day. You're supposed to absorb the highest of the highest of the high emotions, the highest of the high states of being, regardless of what your external condition is. Now, 
Does that mean that you're not supposed to strive to become uh, financially uh, wealthy? No, it means that when you're playing Monopoly with your friends, you don't let them win, right? You still compete, but you know you're not winning. You, you know you're not winning anything, anyways. Similarly, for this life, you're supposed to give it your all. Anything that you do, you're supposed to be great at everything. But understand that it will never and it can never change anything about what you are internally. That's the nuance. You're supposed to chase, or you're, not chase, rather. You're supposed to, uh, to apply yourself, to apply your mind to your different goals. But anything that is on the external realm, on your outside reality, is not supposed to affect how you gauge yourself within yourself. You're supposed to feed your temple. You're supposed to feed your temple with the highest emotions, highest frequencies, highest understandings of yourself at every single turn in all circumstances. You're not supposed to depend on external circumstances to validate what you are because you're missing the point. And the people that are stuck in the theories and are stuck in the debating, why are they debating? They're only debating because they can never produce enough self-esteem for themselves to not need anything or anyone to give them a boost of uh, to give them a boost of energy they need this vampiric exchange to always clash with someone to always clash with someone when it comes to politics religion spirituality because that's the only way they feed because they cannot for the life of them go beyond those physical eyes and entertain high level emotions so that brings me back to the, that brings me to the next point the people who build this world are forever low self-esteem. They don't run shit. They don't have shit. They are desperately trying to get the attention of Ain, and I'll explain that to you in a few minutes. And that's what the Gede has. The Gede, he's the divine masculine. Independent of what happens externally, he is always on the highest of high levels of confidence. So, your self-esteem is what you are left with when you close your eyes and you can no longer experience anything and you can no longer interact with anyone. But the problem is, the people who so-called built this world, they have zero self-esteem, so they needed to build a world that would always mirror back to them how special they are, how powerful they are, how beautiful they are, because you cannot ascend dimensions without self-esteem. So, the moment the external reminders of wealth, of attractiveness, of prowess, of power, of intelligence stop coming in, they stagnate because they don't believe them things about themselves. They do not believe those things about themselves. And that's why they created a system and made you low self-esteem. We're always talking about world peace, world peace, world peace, and we need love for world peace. Fuck no. Love produces some of the most, some of the most, some of the biggest atrocities have been done in the name of love. We need self-esteem. We need people with unconditional self-esteem and that's what the they represent you can never limit them to the the vision of their external eyes to gauge what they are within and that's how they are able to attract the attention of Ain, which is the ultraviolet cosmic feminine so let me break it down for you nothing as men if you're a man and if you thought just a little bit, you understand that what is really the most powerful part of a woman is her attention and her eyes. Nothing is more powerful than the eye or the attention of a woman. And that is the key to understanding Ain. But Ain is the eyes and the attention of a woman, but on 
the cosmic level. So what these people have been trying to do, they've made men only concerned with attracting the feminine gaze externally through material, through status, through power. But the problem is, so it's almost like they tried, they tried to put a certain class of people, they tried to marginalize us and make sure that we had to abide and we had to go through their own ways of being. It's almost like we're, we're in a class with, 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 with students that are very, very slow. They're very, they're, they're, they're not that perceptive. So in the, on the evolutionary scale, they are really, really far behind. And so they have to use tactics and they have to use methodologies that are very low vibrational, which is hatred, which is jealousy, which is everything that is not inherently something that is uplifting for you. So that they, one of the things they suffer from the most is that whatever they do, they can never attract the attention of Ain. And in the, the last video, I explained to you how Ain makes you eternal. Because imagine the most beautiful woman when it comes to your perception anyways. She's beautiful. She is every single possible positive adjective. But understand this. Ain is an opening for this cosmic, for this ultraviolet attention to hit you. But this attention can only hit you when first, remember I told you, what is the tree of life? The tree of life is your woman. So, first of all, you have to master your sexual energy. You have to master your sexual energy on a relationship to on a relationship basis with your woman. So as long as you haven't purified your tree of life, which is your relationship with your woman, you can't even think about bringing down the energy of Ain. It's not going to work. It has to be reflected through your woman first. Then remember, this is a hundred percent of sexual energy, right? A hundred percent of sexual energy is contained in you. But 12% is related to the sexual organs, and that is related to the brain. But the Gide is beyond the brain. The, the Gide is operating from 100 minus 12 is 88. Full body orgasm. This other 88%. Now, this is a very different type of orgasm than what is generally thought in when it comes to Tantra, etc. So in essence, to access this 88, and 88 is only an, an um, uh, what's it called? A arbitrary number. To access this other type of bliss, this body needs to be full and filled with self-esteem, high level emotions. So to be able to even enter the fold of the realm of the Gide, you have to be a sexual master. If you're not even, if you haven't even mastered your sexual energy, forget about even talking about the realm of the Gide. So once you're able to do that, and once you're able to, to master and sustain and cultivate those high-level frequency emotions, you are now able to attract the attention of Ain. Ain fuses with what is compatible and complementary to it. Therefore, the more self-esteem, the more high-frequency emotions, the more high-frequency states of being you carry, the more that Ain will mingle this ultraviolet attention, cosmic feminine attention will mingle with your aura. That is Gede. So, Gede has a staff that he uses as his phallus. And he, he dances with his phallus on the earth. Why? It's not because he's, he's, he's obsessed by sex. That is absurd. No, he's telling you that his wife, his feminine counterpart is cosmic. It is nature with it. It's nature itself. He has reached a level of, he has reached a level 
of attainment so high that the only woman that could lay eyes on him is the ultraviolet attention of the Ain. But to get the attention of Ain, what do you need? The external needs to match the internal. You can't be a thief. You can't be a liar. You can't be an abuser. You can't be a coward because that doesn't attract Ain. Ain is like the, the woman of women. She has everything, right? She's in that, it's an energy that's in this realm that's undescribable. Why the fuck would she look down on earth? Because she sees something that is extraordinary. She's like, wait a second. This entity not only has transcended death while living, but he has cultivated a level of beauty that is on par in the visible and the invisible realm. And that's why what attracts this cosmic attention is justice, fairness, internal cleansiness, internal courage, bravery. When you embody all those masculine principles and energies within yourself, you attract the attention of Ain. And Ain gives you bliss. She gives you and she animates this 88% of sexual energy within you with bliss, with contentment. You are no longer a th- Uh, You're no longer a slave to passions, whether mental, emotional, sexual, psychic. You are animated because what the fuck do men, why do we work? What do you work for? In one of my classes, I can't remember. I was like, what is your subconscious mind? People say, oh, this is subconscious. This is no, the subconscious mind is when you, as a man, you can know, I love pussy. The Theme, the center of all your thoughts, of all your aspirations is woman. But remember, pussy is only one aspect of the woman. The woman is complete. And that's why you have to become a master of the tree of life. And then, okay, so now, once you've mastered the tree of life, which is below here, you have Ain Sofar, Ain Sof, and Ain. Ain Sofar is your mother's generation. Ain Sof is your grandmother's generation. And Ain is your great, great grandmother's generation. What does that mean? As a Gide, you must clear the way through three generations of feminine energy so that the energy of Ain reaches all the way down here and takes the divinity within each and every member of the family back to the heavenly realms. Gede is here to save the children, which is the truest aspect within you. Because, let me ask you this. Do your children need to have diplomas? Do your pets need to have diplomas? No. We love our children. We love our pets. We give them everything without them giving us anything in return. You just love them. That is your nature. Your nature is giving. Your nature is high frequency. Your nature is forgiving. Your nature is loving. Your nature is nurturing. Why don't you nurture your internal temple in the same way? Knowledge is useless if it doesn't lead to self-worth, self-respect, self-love, and self-esteem. You can read all the fucking books that you want. You can join all the organizations that you want. But ultimately, you will never be, as a woman, able to become the ain or as a man to attract the ain if you do not have High level emotions. I don't care. The end result is what matters really. What do you have to show for all your theories? Yeah, you got all those theories. Where's that shit? Where's that shit? You got all those theories in your in your temple, but low self-esteem, uh, anxiety, uh, fear, uh, 
jealousy, despair. You got all those theories and you're, you are forever bound to other people and to exchanging with other people and to, and to debating with other people because you don't even have the courage. That's why they call them brave gede, brave, brave gede. Because brave gede says, you know what? I see this, I see this, this world that they created. It has nothing to do with me. This temple is only deserving of the high level of emotions, of the highest level of, of bliss, of the highest levels of love, of contentment, of gratitude. I will never stoop to the level of the physical eyes which belong to a system that has been designed by people with low self-esteem to gauge what I am inside. What I'm telling you, Every single day, instead of reading this damn book about magic and the theories and the meditation, every single day, practice high emotions, embody joy, embody gratitude, embody happiness, embody bliss, practice high emotions. Because like I said, yeah, you're looking for the ultimate theory of the theories of the theories that's going to allow you to do 20,000 pushups in one day, but every single day I'm doing 100 pushups. Five years into it, you have done 500 push-ups. Five years at 100 push-ups a year, how many fucking push-ups did I do? Five years, so it's 365 times 100 times 5. I have done 182,500 push-ups to your 500 because you were looking for a theory. Ultimately, Theories do not matter. The only thing that matters is every day feel high emotions. Put high emotions in your temple. Knowledge that doesn't lead to action, i.e. high, high self-worth, high self-love, high self-respect, high self-esteem is worthless, worthless, worthless. I don't care who your guru is. I don't care who your voodoo priest is. I don't care who it is. If it doesn't lead to Actions that will actually feed your aura and bring you closer to immortality and bring you closer to finally getting rid of the rhythm of the breath, then you ain't doing shit. So the Gede, they're mad at the Gede. Why? Because the Gede is attracting the attention of the highest of the highest feminine energy, which is the ultraviolet violet energy that is channeled or that comes down through the aperture that is called Ain. Gede, he is the divine masculine and he doesn't wait on anything or anyone to be before him or to... Ha, yo, it's so crazy. It's so crazy. So, you're a man or you're a woman and you're waiting on something that is external to you to validate you and to give you permission to feel high emotions within yourself. So you can't feel the high emotions before you get the job. You can't feel the high emotion before you get the woman. You can't feel the high emotion before. Why do you need to be conditioned by conditions? Cause and effect. Fuck cause and effect. That is the master's reach the eighth law of Tahuti and realize, oh shit, cause and effect is some bullshit because ultimately you control all causes and you control all effects and that is done through your decision making and your will and you saying, whatever happens with these two physical eyes, I don't give a fuck. I deserve the highest of the highest of everything. Even if it doesn't happen physically right away, I will make sure that I get the benefits and I get the spiritual and physical and mental and monetary and psychic nutrients of those high emotions. I don't debate. I don't argue. I don't give a fuck what you think, what you believe. It doesn't matter. Get out of those vampiric 
parasitical relationships where you're always arguing with a dumbass fucking person for no goddamn reason. It will never do anything of substance for you. The only thing you have to do is to resonate at such a high level that that you replace the breath and find a source of energy that will pulsate your aura creating movement long before your breath is gone immortality equals finding and connecting your aura to an eternal energetic source that will make it pulsate so as a gay day when you finally reach this internal beauty that's oh that was the point that i forgot to say gay day gets the benefit of the internal beauty. They say whatever comes, whatever is done in the dark sh shall come to the light. The beauty, the internal integrity, the etern internal courage, everything that was done in the darkness of, anon of being anonymous will come to the light. And this light is the eyes of Ain, who will sustain you, who will rejuvenate you because she is the cosmic woman and those cowardly people that make all those systems because they have zero self-esteem, are mad, are jealous, are envious because they can never reduce our self-esteem and they can never ever fucking separate our connection with Ain. Ain. As long as you're in, as long as you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, and as long as you're in the right energy, and you and, and you 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 are trying to become pure, beautiful, have integrity, be courageous, and be absolute, absolutely without fear. Fearless is a misnomer. Fear doesn't exist, so you don't have to be fearless. Fear doesn't fucking exist. As long as you embody those masculine characteristics within yourself and you're not looking for external validation, eventually Ain looks down and Ain falls upon you and your aura. And that's what makes them mad about Gede because they, Gede doesn't give a fuck about anything. Gede, the only thing that Gede gives a fuck about is perfection. And perfection is your masculine right. You should seek perfection you should seek perfection you should not bow down to anything but yourself bow down to yourself and bow down in perfection but the only way you will bow down to yourself is if you are worthy of your own worship think about what i just fucking said become worthy of your own worship and you will bow down to yourself and you will attract ain and automatically all the things that you want is so-called external woman spirits goddesses will come and flock in your life don't try to take shortcuts and mirror and be like those indecent people for external rewards no instead actually make whatever is internal 